Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to episode 2 of Sea Bass Survives. So if you didn't see the first episode, I really encourage you to go back and check that out because you'll see where we started and at the same time toward the end of that video, I venture into the nether and in about 15 seconds, uh, I am able to fail miserably and hightail out of there. So you might get some laughs out of going back and watching that first episode if you haven't seen it. But anyway, welcome. In this episode, we're going to continue working on our hidey hole. And I did a little bit of work between episodes, dug out a tunnel right here and a room down below. And the plan is that on this side, we're going to build an AFK fishing farm. And then on this side, we're going to build a automated chicken cooker. So I think what we're going to do is get started first on the AFK fishing farm. I've collected a bunch of the resources for that and I'm pretty much ready to go. For the chicken farm, I actually need to go back to the nether and get some cords. So uh, depending on where we get today, we might get kitted up and go back, but I want to be a lot more prepared and not embarrass myself like I did in the last episode. So we'll see how far we get. But anyway, I'm going to start on the fishing farm, and I'll bring you guys back as soon as I have uh, some good progress to show you. Okay, thanks. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. I actually made a lot more progress than uh, I was planning. I was planning on cutting in about halfway through the AFK fishing farm, but in reality, it's so easy to build that I just finished the whole thing and did a couple other things uh, before bringing you guys back. I AFK'd overnight, and so let's take a look at what we've got. I AFK'd for about maybe eight or nine hours in total. So we've got a full double chest here, full double chest here, and a little bit over a half a chest here. So when I have pulled a couple things out, I got a enchanted fishing rod, combined a few rods, and, and made a pretty decent rod here. And then I've got a, a decent enchanted bow. So, you know, this is not my design. It's uh, Panda 4994's original design. And then I made some changes based on some fixes that Izumavoid posted in a video of his. So I'll put links to both their videos uh, in the down below just to give those guys credit. But it works pretty good. And if you guys haven't built one of these before, it's a great way to get started early in the game. Uh, as you saw, you get some enchanted bows, enchanted rods, and a bunch of other things, books, um, some good stuff for, for brewing potions. So... On top of that, I haven't done the chicken farm yet because we've got to go back to the nether for that to get some quartz. But I did start just a starter egg farm here. So this thing's been running for a couple of hours. I've got, I don't know, three, it looks like four chickens in there. So I'll probably add a couple more in there. But this just gives me a good base of eggs to start for the, the chicken farm when we build that thing right here. So... And then the other thing I did is I had this spot right here and I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I thought that I would try a squid farm here. And I don't know how effective this is going to be because we've got that swamp that's, you know, maybe 50, maybe 100 blocks that way. So I have a feeling that the, the rates aren't going to be all that efficient here, but I thought I would try it out. So the idea here is that they'll spawn in the water here, drop through the, the signs here and then suffocate down below. And then what I've got going on right now, only because I don't really have enough iron to do a, a floor of hoppers is, I've got a couple dispensers here. I'm gonna hook them up to a redstone clock and then have them flush the floor with water maybe every three or four minutes. And, and we'll see what we get. And it'll just collect into a chest here. So, but for now, what I wanna do is get back into the nether and see if we can get some quartz, maybe make our way over to that nether fortress that we saw, and then we'll have uh, the resources that we need to do this chicken farm. So let's head in there right now. And uh, you know what, let me grab, I've got some chicken cookie. Let me grab a little bit more food. I've got, uh, I'm gonna make some boots really quick here. Okay, let's put those on. And I'm gonna get rid of these rods right now and this hoe, we don't need that, we don't need that bow. And just in case, I'm gonna get rid of that diamond pick. So, now I did go back in the nether after the last episode and disabled the old portal over there and relocated it just because that, that island area was was such a challenge, I just didn't want to work off of that. So I've got a safer area here. So let's hunt around, and there's some quartz right here. So I'm going to collect some quartz, guys, and make my way over to the fortress, and I'll bring you guys back over there, okay? Thanks. 
Okay, everyone, so I just made my way to the nether fortress and dug down through a wall, and I'm just walking into it now. I thought I'd bring you into it right here. I kind of want to explore a little bit. I've picked up a decent amount of uh, quartz already, a little bit over a stack, so I'm good on quartz, but I thought I would explore this. Uh, I'd love to get some nether wart and soul sand and at least maybe a couple blaze rods and maybe we'll stumble along a lucky chest as we go. So I'm just going to keep you with me for a little bit while we check this out. Look at that right there. All right, we'll take that. And who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and find some nice loot. I'm going to drop torches as I go just so I can keep track of where I'm coming from so I can get back. All right, we can use that. Uh, I think when we get back, we're going to get some horses next episode because we've got uh, horse armor now and plenty of saddles. And so I think we'll go try and track down a nice horse, maybe a couple horses and bring them back to the uh, to the hidey hole. OK, let's see. We came from that direction where let's go this way. Yeah, I don't have any kind of enchanted armor, and I'm limited on arrows, so I kind of want to just do a quick hit here, get what we can get pretty safely, and then we'll explore in a lot more detail once I feel a little bit more comfortable with our gear. be great if we had an infinity bow, too, because I've got, uh, what do we got here, 35 arrows, and that's it. I can make more arrows once we get the chicken farm up and running, but uh, it would be great to have infinity, so... That'll come pretty quickly. All right, let's see. We came from this direction. Let's see, did we go this way yet? I don't think we did. Let's drop a torch. Okay, dead end. So if you haven't picked up on it, I tend to put my torches on the right as I'm going, so I know if I keep them on my left, I'm returning the way I the way I started from. So that's the way I do it. I know everybody does it differently, but for me, I'm, I'm a right hand, left hand type of person, and so I put them on my right as I go, and that way, if they're on my left, I know I'm coming back to where I started. All right. All right, we're getting uh, a little bit of decent loot here. Let's see what this one has. Let's eat real quick here. Okay, dead end. down here. There we go. All right, let's check this way first. There we go. feather so we can pick up the sand and it looks like there's another room yeah there's another room right back there with with more of everything so we're going to do pretty good on this run if we can stay intact and get home in one piece which uh, if we don't get too screwed up by blaze we ought to be all right yeah let's grab all this right here we're just going to take it all
Okay, at this point, I'll be pretty satisfied if we can knock down a couple blaze. I really just want to get a couple blaze rods so we can get some uh, potions going, get some brewing going. And you know what? Uh, let's see, can I dump anything else? Let's see, we're not going to do that. I don't have any glowstone. Let's pick up some glowstone. Wow, it's easy. Might as well grab some. Once we get that witch farm going, we won't have to worry about this, but for right now, a little bit of glowstone is not going to help, or is not going to hurt us, I should say. Let's see, get rid of this. Okay, that's good. Okay, guys, so I just turned the corner after I stopped recording, and I think we might have a blaze spawner up there. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to try and get this lava cleared. Yep, that's a spawner. Okay, so let me get safe, and... I'll make that a little bit safer, and then uh, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, guys, we're back. So, as you saw, that uh, that blaze spawner was uh, too challenging for me. I, I spent about five minutes trying to get down to that thing and, and corral the lava, but it was just producing uh, blazes faster than I could keep up with it, and I wasn't really geared up for it. So, I ended up dying and running back, collecting my stuff, and re-strategizing, and so I just killed enough to get three blaze rides, and then ran back to the to the uh, nether portal as you guys saw so i think what we're going to do is i've got enough stuff to get some brewing going and finish that chicken farm and so i think i'll work on those things and i'll bring you guys back once i've made some progress okay welcome back so you'll see that the chicken farm is done and running and it is not the chicken farm that i set out to build as it turns out, I got the design built that I was thinking about and was not seeing any results and did a little research and there's a change with version 1.11 with a new rule called max entity cramming. And basically it renders a lot of the older chicken farms useless. And basically what the rule says is that if there's more than 24 entities in a single block, they'll start suffocating. So I found a design on YouTube uh, from a YouTuber named The Canadian, and I will link to his video down below, and he had a pretty compact design, and so that's what I've built here, and it seems to be working pretty well. The way it works and gets around the rule that broke the older farms is it actually has two different breeding cells, so you get a breeding cell here, and then a breeding cell right down in there, and as long as you keep those at 
24 chickens or under, you don't have any problems. And so those uh, breeding cells, I added a third one down here, back here that I'm testing, but basically those breeding cells drop eggs into a series of hoppers that go into a dropper that comes up into the dispensers. And the timing is such that the egg dispenses slightly before the lava above so that you don't have the lava burning the egg as it comes out. And so that these chickens will grow and then occasionally the lava will go off and and uh, send them to their demise. So anyway, it seems to be working pretty well. I've got, you know, just about five full stacks of chicken now and I've been running it for a few hours. And I, to be honest with you, uh, didn't want to go over the 24, so I was a little cautious. So I, I probably have only about 20 chickens in each of the breeding cells. But in any case, the design looks like it's working pretty well. I think there's probably a way of maybe changing the redstone and reconfiguring a little bit so you compact some more and maybe have four breeding cells. So I'll take a look at that at some point, but that's going to be it for the chicken farm for now. And then this thing, I was reading up on squid farms and squid spawning, and unfortunately these levels are lower than the levels that squids typically spawn at. I think only this top layer of, of water is. So I'm probably going to scrap this idea and come up with something up. Uh, something else down the road to use that space but for now guys that is going to be it i wanted to say thank you very much for watching the video if you liked it please uh, give a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribe we'll have more videos coming out shortly thanks a lot bye bye